around the same time as the earliest accidental stereo recording that we have in 1901, there was a discovery of a time machine. What type of time machine? Well, I'll explain on today's episode of Life's Pollock Buffet. So keep it tuned to this channel only on YouTube. This is John Paulus, host of Life's Potluck Buffet on YouTube. If you've been enjoying the show, please subscribe. And if you have already subscribed, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. And if you have a brave browser, you can now contribute basic attention tokens to Life's Potluck Buffet with John Paulus on YouTube. Thank you for your support and thank you for listening. Now, at the beginning of this episode, I mentioned the discovery of a time machine. Does that mean that we know that there are time travelers? No. Well, this was a time traveler, and it, but not in the way you think. So the year is 1901. Around the same time of our earliest recording of accidental stereo. Remember, there was a recording in Shanghai of a Chinese opera production, and there are two wax cylinders set up to record, one near the singers and one near the instrumentals. And that, when made into one recording, when copied onto one recording, it created a stereo recording. Around the other side of what we call the Eastern Hemisphere now, in a location 150 feet underwater, off the coast of a Greek island called Antigithra, there was the discovery of a cargo ship that had been lost 2,000 years earlier. And on this cargo ship, there were bronze statues and marble statues and all sorts of pottery vessels for carrying food and glassware and, well, just a lot of cargo. But there was one item on this ship that would change the way the history of technology is thought of. And that item was an encrusted piece containing parts of what is the earliest analog computer that has yet to be discovered. And today we call this machine, after the island off of which it was found, we call it the Antikythera mechanism. And by the way, if you're a language buff, the reason that Antikythera is called Antikythera is because it is opposite, anti in Greek, the island of Kythera, which is a bigger island that is a little bit away from Antikythera. So that's the whole anti part. It doesn't mean anybody's opposed to the island of Kythera. It just means that the island is opposed in position to the other island. So that's where the metaphorical figurative use of anti, meaning opposed to something figuratively, comes in. But the, this anti is the physically opposite of something. So that's just... Uh, it's just something I put in your hat for those of you who love languages. So the Antikythera mechanism was thought to be prochronistic by a lot of people after the discovery of it because they thought that and prochronism is a kind of anachronism, you know, anachronism, a thing where it's out of time. Well, a prochronism is like a specific type of anachronism where something is found that can't possibly be where it's found because it's too it's it's a technology in this case that's way too far advanced for what we knew about what people were doing on earth at that time what human beings had created up until that point this was a technology that was just seemingly a little bit too different from what we had the remains of. And so a lot of people thought, well, this isn't, this is something later. It's just a, you know, the clock that had, uh, you know, uh, fallen onto the ship from another ship uh, a thousand years later, because there were lots of, um, the, the, the main piece that was visible was a, a gear, a very clearly a bronze gear. And so the, 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 the quality and the exactness of this gear and everything to do with that and and the way it looked it just looked like something that was not from that period of time and that that period of time was around the first century bc so and 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 this this actual mechanism has since been dated to maybe even the 
early 2nd century BC. So it's that old. And it turned out that the people who thought this was a prochronism, uh, that type of anachronism that is like, uh, you know, finding a message from 200 BC that says, yeah, um, message me on WhatsApp. That, that's a pro, that would be a prochronism that is an actual prochronism where it really can't be. Um, that message can't be saying that since obviously WhatsApp was was nowhere remotely created in 200 BC. But what was discovered when this mechanism, well, first of all, the mechanism fell into three pieces because it wasn't preserved properly through no nobody's fault. It just simply wasn't known what was going on with this hunk of stuff that was found. And so the the and then subsequently there have been more pieces that have fallen off but the mechanism has inscriptions on it in greek of that time period that are inscribed on the bronze pieces in it there's even a kind of instruction manual that is in there written in that time period so this was an incredible incredible find and really changed the history of technology because here we have a really, really advanced time machine. And this is where time machine comes in because what it turns out to be is what is sometimes called an orrery, but it's a mechanical model of the solar system that also allows various calendrical dates to be predicted and also allows for the prediction of eclipses and all sorts of phenomena like that and the, the prediction of when cycles will happen for games like the Olympics, but not the Olympics. People who have studied it have found that the game cycles that are on there are, di- are different games. There, there were other big games like the Olympic Games that um, may, the, that that it, that this is um, was probably predicting the when it was time to have those games. You can use this to do that. If you remember the episode about calendars that I did a few months ago you'll know the difficulty of actually keeping time and how it really, though we take it for granted now, um, it's, a, it's not, it, it was never a, an easy thing. So this machine really does a lot of work, and it's a computer. It has many, many gears, and the gears turn the wheels, and the wheels, it's an analog computer because the representation of the thing that it's uh, computing or showing and uh, and uh, the the you know um, display and the output for the person using it is continuous right it's on dials and wheels and gears that have marks on them so it's not displayed as a result of numerical translation of information received like in a binary code so this analog computer may have had a hand crank that was, you were able to turn, and therefore, see, as you turned it, it, all of the things would change based on the movements of the solar system as, as um, understood at that time. And it enabled the um, prediction, as I said, of astronomical events, of various calendar years, various cycles, and these cycles were very important at that time, um, the various 100-year um, uh, cycles and things like that, in addition to, as I said, the four-year cycle of a game, uh, of a games like the Olympic Games, but not the Olympic Games. That's that's clear. So I don't want you to think that this that the, the this is the Olympic one just because we're so familiar with the Olympics, but there were several other games that were as important as the Olympic Games that um, were happened on regular four-year cycles and two-year cycles and things like that. So, so that's the Antikythera mechanism. S- people who study it believe that this was not the only mechanism that existed at that time, and that there were had to have been previous ones that were created. So this was, you know, blew out of the water the ideas that there couldn't be this kind of very precise and advanced, like kind of think of it as kind of clock making technology because the next most advanced thing that we have um, happened about 1600 years after this was made. 
and that were that were those were some clocks that were made, astronomical clocks and so forth, in terms of the gears and the and that's in like the 1400s. So you know, there's a period there where we don't have bits of technology that were as complex and as intricate and as precise as this piece of technology. That doesn't mean that they're not out there. They could very well be in the same way that the other um, analog computers that were um, out there at the time when this was made, this was not a kind of one-off. And scientists are pretty clear about that. People who study these things you would think that they, the and historians of science really think that this was probably, there were probably other machines like this, which means there could well have been other machines like this a- afterwards, b- before 1400, when the next kind of similar advanced machine of its type was um, created. Let's use a metachronistic technology. That's a technology that's after its time, and that's the technology of cards, a long, old technology that nowadays maybe are a throwback. Let's ask the cards what we need to keep track of in the same way that the Antikythera mechanism kept track of time. Yellow lemons, blue dumplings, magenta noodles, cards, tell us somethings. It's card 31. Get people's names right. Let me read it to you. We are our names truly. And your effort to get people's names right will make them feel that they are visible as who they are. When we get names wrong, we are accidentally erasing and replacing someone's identity. Write and speak people's names correctly. Ask again if someone's name doesn't stick or ask the person to help you pronounce it. This should not be overlooked as a small thing. Think about that today. Think about how people have gotten your name wrong or how you have surprised yourself by getting someone else's name right. Well, that's kind of a technology like the Antikythera mechanism for getting things right. So I appreciate that, Cards. That's a, that, was, that was a good one. Thanks. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time on Life's Potluck Buffet. Mm-hmm.